Hey, what's going on, guys? Kurosama here, and with me is my co-host, Channel Two S. <laughs> Second sound wave. Either name works, but one of them is my name, and one is my brand. Yep. I'd prefer you call me the latter. Mm, don't call him the first two S, because he ain't gonna like that. We don't talk about him. No, nope, he was an asshole. <laughs> I take no responsibility for his disappearance, for legal reasons. Hmm. Gotta keep that on down though. Yeah, yeah. We uh, <laughs> we don't want to get any unwanted attention. Oh, not not at all. For the first episode in a long time, um, I mean, I feel like there's not been a lot of things for us to talk about. Not really. I mean, there's one big obvious thing to talk about that we're going to talk about for a while here, but we are probably going to, we probably should kind of skirt around it a little bit because it is something that YouTube gets a little bit trigger happy about, but I don't think we have to mention it by name or anything. I'm sure you guys all know what we're talking about. Yeah, this is called like the the CV. The C- yeah, sure. You know what? CV. That yeah. works. Yeah. The CV. Mm-hmm. But um, before we get into the topics at hand... Um, definitely want to give a shout out to NewTypeHQ.com for sponsoring this video and sponsoring uh, each of us. Um, you know they are fantastic when it comes to supporting people during this. Um, I don't even want to say the the p word um, during this mm, event. <laughs> not not the demic. Um, this time of big heart. Okay, wait. I already regret saying that. <laughs> but yeah, they've been they've been pretty. Um, pretty helpful with getting like kits supplies and tools and things to people even i have uh, purchased things over here in japan um from new type because there's certain paints and certain things i really need it and they shipped it out to me and i got it within a week so i know a lot of things from amazon is pretty much delayed almost like 12 days there's a lot of things i bought from amazon uh, i'm like it's been two weeks where is it but um yeah overall new type has been extremely helpful um and if you want to you know utilize a uh, new type you can also get a 10 percent discount uh if you use uh, what was your promo code 2s channel 2s my code is channel 2s channel 2s or you can use mine which is Krosama over there uh in the um checkout selection and these are one-time use codes that are only good for your first order, but if you've already used one, you can still use the other. Exactly. Get the best of both worlds. All right, so with the sponsor um, you know, being mentioned, I definitely want to talk about um, how both bored and engaged I am in this damn house. <laughs> that is the story of my life, Crow. <laughs> Well, like you mentioned to me, this is something that you're uh, well acquainted with already, right? Yes, I have not really had much of a difference in my life experience during this whole story arc in 2020, (laughs) I guess we could say. Um, (laughs) I've been staying at home a lot, as I always do. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been building more Gunpla, which is actually kind of a new thing because I kind of got out of... I kind of got burned out on building over the winter, which is why I was kind of dragging my three dragging my feet through the uh, the red frame build i was just not really feeling it mm-hmm. but i've actually built a lot of kits this year um left and right just little high grade here high grade there master grade zaku you know just some just kind of get my get my skills back up and running and i've been also i guess more as a result of the the whole situation i've actually gone a little bit further and started a my first like serious painted build um so that's definitely been quite an experience Mm. Oh, you said your first painted build? Yes, because I have painted stuff with Gundam markers before. I don't call that painting because they looked like hot garbage, and there was no point in which they actually looked like they were even remotely promising. I could tell they were both going to be kind of a train wreck from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But this was the first project where I was like, okay, I want to make this look good. I want to get this right. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure this looks as good as it can possibly be. Mm-hmm. So oh that's my. that's the project right now. I'm about 5% through it, but I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along so far. I have made some mistakes, but I'm improving them whenever I can, kind of just pushing my way through it, and I think this is going to be pretty cool when it's done. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. Uh, definitely can't wait to see it. Um, and you told me that you're doing uh, pretty much rattle cans, right? Yes. So I am painting a Re100 Vignagina 2. 
And for the hardcore Gundam fans that have been following the series for a while, you will know that the very first official images we saw of the Vignag Unit 2 had a much cooler color scheme than the actual finished model. The red was a little bit darker, and the black parts were gray instead of black. This color scheme a lot of people loved. The finished final color scheme for the kit, basically no one liked, myself included. I ended up with a Vignagina 2 through the JoJo and Ho JoJo Hobby and stuff about a Koo box. Um, you guys probably wouldn't remember it even if you watched those videos because it was actually one of the few boxes that I opened off air. Um, but I had the kit. I was like, you know what? I don't like anything about how this looks visually. I can't make it look worse. Why not just give it a crack? So I got some uh, I got some rattle cans from New Type, and I'm just working my way through it. So far, I am in the process of painting the red sections for the torso, waist, and head, and they're coming along quite well. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with some of the larger pieces, like the back skirt at first, where I was, because of how large they were and how I was kind of painting them, I did get the paint a little bit thick in some spots, and I had a couple bubbles, but on the whole, it's coming out pretty well. Oh, nice. And uh, you doing, like, but I definitely priming do need first? Yeah, so I'm doing priming. I'm priming, and then I'm going to hit it with some... I'm hitting it with the uh, the Yamato Red by uh, Mr. Color. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just do a flat top coat over that. Okay, pretty simple then. Yeah, simple, straightforward. No shading, no pre-shading, post-shading, weathering, anything like that. Just basically just a straight color swap. Nice. Yeah, the Mr. Uh, Mr. Hobby and Mr. Color stuff, like that's like some of the stuff I use um, you know, from my airbrush. And even some of the, the spray painting, uh, spray painting, it's phenomenal. It's a great brand. Um, I would actually say it's better than Tamiya personally. Um, but yeah, Mr. Hobby is is beautiful, fantastic. Yeah, I like them. The cans are okay. They are a little bit expensive for what you get. Um, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not going to be using rattle cans a lot in the future. This is probably the only build I am going to be using them for. And when I actually do get an airbrush, which I will soon, I'm just going to get some cheap crappy model and do a video on it kind of showing you guys what you can expect from a low-end airbrush mm -hmm. um i'd really like to try out some other brands because while mr color has some nice colors i kind of want to try kind of want to try some gaia i want to try some of like those vallejo mecca colors mm -hmm. and i'd really like to try turbo dorks paints because they have some really really cool looking paints that have like kind of a color shifting effect to them where like they'll be kind of a bluish color if you look at it from one angle but then a greenish color where you look from another it's a super cool effect i already have a couple of their paints i tried doing a little bit of hand painting with them because they have i think they said on their site you can do that it doesn't turn out super great so i really want to see what happens when i put those through an airbrush because i think they could look pretty cool okay yeah, um, I, I think Gaia pretty much has like some um, that are exactly like that. Uh, one of the ones I have is a prism metallic bl uh, blue violet. So it has like a blue, but also like a, a violet kind of tone to it whenever you're shimmering the light. Um, so Gaia has some I'm things have to try that like out that. too. But yeah, I mean, just just try your hand at different things. Um, that's what I've done. I've, I've got like Tamiya, I got Mr. Hobby, I got Gaia notes. Um, I think that's pretty much the three major brands I use. But, yeah, out of all of them, to me, it's kind of like my, my least favorite. And uh, Gaia Notes Yeah, is, I could see that. Yeah, Gaia Notes is pretty much top tier. Yeah, I, I honestly just want to try out everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try out a little bit of everything, see what I like, um, and just see, see where it goes from there. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Um, well, are you working on anything currently, or is that like exclusively the one model you're, you're in, you know, in the middle of building? Well, the Vignagina, Vignagina is currently my project just because it's kind of spread out over my whole workbench, so I don't really have much of a choice. Okay. Um, but I could see myself maybe snapping up a couple SDs or something just to just to just to kind of keep myself engaged during the long periods of like waiting for paint to dry and layers to cure and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just to keep myself interested. Oh. Well, speaking of SDs, I actually just picked up the uh, SD Cross Silhouette Barbados Lupus Rex. Ooh, nice. I actually am really interested in that one. Yeah, like what I've seen um, just from different photos and other reviewers, it, it looks extremely solid. Um, uh, the color separation it is pretty really good does. and it pretty much what you would Can think. Can we talk about the fact that this is the first Barbados Rex kit to have yellow fingertips? Yeah, but then it doesn't have the... Um, the back of the hand uh white armor 
So it's like the whole entire thing is is yellow, but you still have to paint the white. No, the back of the hand's white. You sure? The back of the hand's white, and then the inside of the palm is gray. It's just the fingers that are yellow. There's like a yellow piece in the middle, and there's a white piece that goes in the back, and a gray piece that goes in the inside. I think. Well, okay, yeah, I don't think yeah you're right. Um, but still, like, a lot of the yellow needs to be gray. Yes, but I think it would be easier to paint those yellow parts into gray than it would be to paint yellow on top of the gray fingers of something like the 1-100. Yeah, like, for, for people who are kind of, like, more starting or people who are not going to go too complex, yeah, that's true. Um, but for me, I would just, like, apply some primer uh, just to, you know, nullify that uh, gray and then paint the yellow on top of that. Yeah, but I feel I feel like a lot of people don't really use primer when they're hand brushing. Oh. Yeah, I mean I mean it definitely helps. I've just I don't really see that a lot usually. Oh, I'm here to break the mold, baby. I mean, it's a good way to break the mold. I'm sure it works well. I just I I don't think that's just I just don't think that's the norm for that kind of painting. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Um, it probably isn't. I think people but, just apply, uh, apply paint to plastic and just very thin coats. Yeah, and... they just hit it with some gun to marker. Mm-hmm. And man, can I just say, I'm working with yellow gun to marker right now because I'm practicing on one of the Big Dagina's runners to see if I can use the marker to do the thrusters. Um, mm-hmm. I'm doing it over primer. It still looks kind of ass. I'm really not a fan of the lighter colored gun to markers. Mm-hmm. You, the the way uh, I've learned yeah. to use um, those type of gun markers is you you pour it out into a little pan and you use a hand brush because if you do like the I mean like you don't want to do the tip to the the plastic because it's just it's not gonna look good at all. I mean yeah, but at that point I'd almost rather just use like regular like Tamiya pot paints or something instead of a marker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's that's basically what I do. Uh, I still have my little brushes. Um, I'm a brushes. My uh, gunner markers for certain things like the metallic blue on the gunner marker. I think works extremely well for hand brushing. Uh, vice uh, an acrylic from you know Tamiya or something. Yeah, and actually, funnily enough, um, my gunner marker set is actually the Gundam Age marker set. You want to know why, Crow? Oh. How? Why? Because the marker sets for all the good series were sold out. Wow, that's, that's 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 pretty um, you know, rude, <laughs> to say the least. You still have them? Oh yeah, they're the, they're the only marker set I have because I got them since it's basically. I mean, the age set's basically the same as the standard set, just the frame gray is a little darker. So oh, okay, they just have age branding on them instead of being the regular markers. Could you could you ship me just the uh, the packaging and I'll ship you the packaging of the original Gundam marker? <laughs> I legit don't know if I still have the packaging for them. Oh, you bastard. I actually don't know because I for the longest time I've just had them in a little in a little cup in my like tool organizer, so I don't mm. think I actually still have the box for them anymore. Oh. Uh, is I got I got two of the um the OG gun to marker packaging. Uh it comes with like the six markers, um like the black, yeah. red, um I think yellow, white, and black. And gray. Yeah, and then that terrible little weird like felt tipped lining marker. Yeah, it's it's not oh, good I at all. I hate that thing so much. Mm-hmm. The only one that works fairly well is the black and the red. Like I, I can make those two work pretty decently. Uh, only if it's on like small surfaces, but yeah, if it's like a large flat surface, like you might as well just hand brush or airbrush. The only one of my Gundam markers I still find myself semi-regularly using is the fine tip gray, just because it is actually kind of nice for panel lining. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, I've gotten so used to uh, using the Tamiya panel line accent at this point that even that barely gets any use. Oh yeah, and that, I don't know why that gets such a bad rep. Like I see top builders, like top top builders, use it, but then you got like some some Joe Schmo on a buy and sell facebook gundam page saying how it completely destroyed his entire mobile suit in in a single drop i'm like like i don't i don't see that yeah because he he likes he probably like dunked it in fucking lighter fluid or something to actually like strip it off and yeah like if you pour the solvent on it it's going to damage the plastic if Mm -hmm. you're careful with it and you use it sparingly it works fine 
Yeah. And if you really if you really don't want it to damage your kit, and I have seen it damage people's kits before, that is a legitimate concern. Just put down a layer of top coat first. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's what just I do go gloss all the coat. time. Like gloss if I'm gonna, coat, if I'm gonna paint a line of kit, I'm putting down coat. some uh, clear Boom. coat. There you go. And plus, it lets uh, the paint run you know more smooth down the crevices. Yeah, unless you use flat coat, and then it's just a disaster. Oh yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, out of, that is out of the a, clear. That's, that's a that, that is a cursed gunpla technique. Mm-hmm. Flat coat, then to me a panel line accent. Yeah, the only time you do a matte coat before your your final top coat is if you're doing um, like the uh, pigments or like the um, the, like the little brushes. I forgot what they call it. Um, the little weathering, weathering cases, sponges? huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones that are like look like little makeup kits. Yeah, if you use those, like I'll I'll go matte because if you use gloss or clear, it's not going to like really adhere. It I, grips the particles better. Yeah, but I, mean, I haven't even used that. Those actually, in a yeah, that actually does make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's like the only reason I know these things is because of mistakes I've made in the past of building. It's like, oh, I'm gonna put a uh, gloss coat first. I'm like, not fucking, it's not it's not sticking. <laughs> God damn it. Nope. It's like that, uh, you know those uh, those fabrics that are like hyper water resistant, mm-hmm. where you just like pour a liquid on them and it just runs right off them. Yeah, I imagine that's what it's like trying to do weathering on top of a gloss coat. Yeah, it, the the flakes just you know fly off, and I'm like, fuck. Because <laughs> if, if if you put it on the matte coat, it like even if you try and rub your finger on it, it's not coming off. If you put it on the gloss, you just rub your finger and the entire thing just wipes away. I'm like, well, yeah. There's just a light breeze and all the weathering blows off the kit. <laughs> yeah, like putting a um, like a water a water slide decal on a kit, but not like putting a setter on it. <laughs> it just flies away. Yeah, <laughs> just floats off in the wind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, legit, I don't know like, if I'd really ever get into weathering. Was that? Um, oh, I was just saying that I don't know if I'd really ever get into weathering because I just don't like. Like, I, I know people are, like, all, like, obsessed with realism and all that, but mm-hmm. if I'm buying a kit of a cool-ass giant robot, I don't want to go out of my way to look make it look all shitty and beat up. Like, I want to make it look nice and sleek and cool. Hmm. Yeah, I think I everyone's mean, just me, different. The, to me, weathering a Gunpla is like buying a Lamborghini and then driving it through the mud. Like, you're, like, you're, you're getting it dirty, and it's like, why? It's mm. a dope-ass sports car. It's nice and shiny and sleek. Mm-hmm. And I get for some suits, like a Zaku or something, you could dirty it up. But if it's like, you know, a Strike Freedom or something, why are you weathering that even, you know? Yeah, it really depends on, like, the mobile suit, the usage, and, like, the person behind it. Because, like, you mentioned the uh, Lamborghini. Um, a Lamborghini, you know, as a car, um, is really meant to be that shine gloss, prestige, luxury automobile. But then you have some like a. Yeah. I'm just going to use this. I don't know anything about trucks. A Ford Focus or something. That's probably going to have a lot a, of wear and tear. <laughs> that's and it, not a truck. That's a car. If you pick the one fucking product by Ford that's not a truck. Crow. Wait, a Focus isn't a a, uh, a truck. No, a Focus is a car. Holy oh, shit. what the fuck is a, a, a Ford truck? <laughs> An Avalanche. F one fifty. F one fifty. Okay. That's like the F- basic Ford truck. F one fifty. This is why I don't build car models. I don't know shit about them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. There are, that is, you literally picked the one vehicle by four that's not a truck. (laughs) Well, hey, I did my best. But anyway, an F580, whatever, um, you you get that, and it's probably something that's used for work transit and, like, construction, so it's going to have a lot of wear and tear, and I think that would add to the aesthetic, because a very clean truck, I'm just assuming, I'm not into the, the truck community, obviously, but... I'm pretty sure a lot of dudes would be like, "Ugh, a clean truck." It's like, it's like, you know, like what? What are you, a businessman or something like that? So it probably wouldn't bode well. And say they were Gundams. I think it comes down to this: yeah. Do you want your collection to look like a showroom or a battlefield? Yeah. I kind of like mine looking like a showroom. I want it to look like the opening, like what is it? Not an atrium, like that big open room you go into in Anaheim Electronics, where they bring their investors and they show them all their shiny new mobile suits they're working on. Ooh, look, aren't these cool? Don't you want to buy these for your military? You know, mm-hmm. that's what I kind of want my collection to look like. That's fair. 
Mm. It, it's really just preference. Um, I mean, I, if I guess just to stick to the cars, um, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. I I yeah. like the the clean kind of look of like whenever you first see it come out of the trailer. It looks good. It's not dirty or anything. It's very clean. <clears throat> But I also extremely love the very dusted, old, weathered down look of the third one in the in the um uh, the uh, well the one in the third movie. So it's like I like both both you know I don't really have a big preference. Um, so that's the thing with you know Gundams like I would prefer a very yeah, dirty weathered ground Gundam guy. and a very clean Exia. Yeah. What really gets to me though is when. People will do like a muddied up, dirtied, weathered version of a suit that is very obviously space only. Oh yeah. And I'm like, why? Why are there mud splatters on this wound wart? Like, <laughs> what's the deal with that? What What were you thinking? Exactly. Yeah, but then people are gonna pretty much yell "Gun Gundam Freedom" or whatever that fucking stupid yep. line is. It's like, look, like I'm all about someone yeah. experimenting and doing some crazy shit, but I was like. You, you gotta kind of bring it down a notch, but we got people yeah, make kind of. Yeah, we got people making goddamn hamsters out of fucking thirty minute mission kits. So what do I know? But, but yeah, I feel um, like we got sidetracked, but at the same time, I have no recollection of what we actually got sidetracked from. <laughs> I think it all started with the damn Barbados. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, 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 Barbados. So, yeah, you said you had it. I said it looked really cool, and we started talking about fingers, and everything de-escalated from there. Mm. It does look good, though. Like, I have it in my hands, and the best thing about this is that it comes with the uh, the CS frame. So it's like the RX-78 um, that oh, nice. you know, led this whole series. So, yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about getting a, a frame unless you want the frame booster. Then you're going to have to buy that separate. That's really cool, though. I actually didn't know that about it. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to get one of those. Mm -hmm. And, um, actually, um, unless there were, like, other recent upcoming kits you want to talk about, I can think of a good way to transition that into something else. Oh, go ahead. So, the reason I... I know back when I back when they first announced the Barbatos Lupus Rex, I wasn't super into it, but the reason I'm a lot more interested in that kit now is because I have been playing a lot lately, of a little game called SD Gundam G-Generation Crossphrase. And let me tell you about this game, because it is fan-freaking-tastic. Mm. So SD Gundam G-Generation is basically like a top-down, kind of turn-based tactical RPG. A little bit like something like Fire Emblem, where you have a bunch of units, and you move the units around, you attack enemy units, then it's their turn, they move and attack. You know, you know the deal, it's that type of game. Yeah. They're usually boring as hell. I can't stand them. But something about this game just pulls me in. Maybe it's the fact that it's Gundam. Maybe it's the fact that it has literally, and I am not using that in the in the sense of, you know, figuratively. I mean actually, dictionary literally, there is every single mobile suit from Seed, Double O, Wing, and Iron-Blooded Orphans in this game. If it exists... If it has a wiki page, it's in this game. If it's too obscure to have a wiki page, it's still in this game. <laughs> if you wouldn't necessarily consider it a variant, but it technically is anyways, you better believe it's in this game. Mm. Man, that sounds very tempting. It has everything in it. And not only that, the thing I have to commend this game for the most is the attack animations. Because when it comes to turn-based RPGs like this, those are really the only place where the game has any chance to shine graphically. The mm -hmm. main gameplay, the main battlefield, it's super basic. It's just a map with some sprites on it, and that's about the best you can do with this type of game. But the animations for the attacks, they are so beautiful. I watch them almost every single time. A lot of times with these type of animations, it's just like, oh, that guy shoots his gun, that guy reacts to getting hit. You know, it's pretty boring, it's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. This game has some insane attack animations for some of the Gundams. Incredibly stylized, pure eye candy to look at. Uh, you can definitely tell that someone on the design team for this game really, really liked Gundam 00. 
because basically every mobile suit from Double O has amazing animations, but that's not to knock the animations of the other mobile suits in the game, because anything, pretty much anything that's not like a literal grunt suit has some, at least one, just incredibly cool looking attack. Mm -hmm. And it makes the game just a joy to watch. Yeah, I've seen um, quite a like a little compilation of certain suits that I'm really just interested in. Um, I've seen like a, you know, a couple of the Age Gundam ones, the Age FX in particular, and yeah, the oh, the Age FX has amazing animations. Oh yeah, when it, when it, those funnels come out, I'm like, oh, oh boy, oh, give it. To yeah. Me. And um, I know you you was probably leaning over to the um, the Lupus Rex because uh, I've seen those animations and oh man, that's that makes me sweat. Yeah, I mean, this this game, not even just for the Lupus Rex, like, this game made me go from kind of liking SD Gundams to loving SD Gundams. And mm. what I love about this game is that it's SD Gundam, but it's not like the classic SD Gundam where they're, like, kind of true chibi, where it's, like, one head to one body proportion. Mm -hmm. Th this is literally cross-silhouette the game. Yeah. It is that exact proportion... The kind of pseudo SD, almost like those NX Edge figures they did a few years ago, where you've got some proper limbs, you got a decently proportioned body, and the head's just a little bit bigger than normal. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect balance between classic and SD. It works incredibly well for the style of the game, and I am all for it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's the biggest selling point about that game is the SD proportions are just so spot on of what, like, you know, obviously, we have the cross silhouette line now, but back in the day, that's what people craved. I, at least I believe they wanted posable, you know, articulation um, in, in the legs and the elbows and everything. And that game definitely oh, just absolutely. offers. Yeah, and I think the best thing about it as well, and this is the final selling point, is this game is available everywhere on Steam. You can play this game on PC, and even if you're not a PC guy. The game's on the game's on Switch. The mm -hmm. game's on PS4. It did not get a physical international release the same way that the PC game did, but all of the releases of it, including both the Asian version and the Japanese version, have full English subtitles. Mm. So no matter what version of the game you get, if you can speak English, which you probably do because you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> you can play the game. It, yes, that's actually what I hope. Uh, most Gundam games are in the future, like even the ones that are non like e you know English exclusive, uh, they're like the Asian exclusives. I would still love them from to have that English subtitle option. We don't Can have we that for Gundam Breaker one and two. We're finally mm -hmm. getting another Extreme Versus. Yes. Oh my God! How, how big are you into Extreme Versus? I like it a lot. Um, I've never had. A, I don't have a PS3. I don't have a PS4. So I've. I've. But I did play a lot of Full Boost on emulator mm. on PC. Uh, it doesn't run very well, but it ran well enough that I was able to get a handle on the game, have some fun with it. Um, I love the gameplay. I cannot wait to play it on real hardware. So I am getting Maxi Boost on as soon as it comes out, and I am debating whether or not it's worth buying a ps4 at the literal end of its life cycle just so i can play that one game i, I think it is um personally what like i still have my ps3 and i have a, a very large ps3 um co uh, collection um it, i i don't know i still play my ps3 i have a lot of good times a lot of uh stored games on it and i think my ps4 is going to be the exact same way and if anything Having both a PS4 and if you ever do get a PS5, um, you can always use them for two different things. Like my wife, uh, yeah, because here's the thing, huh? Oh, go ahead, go ahead and finish. Well, uh, like my wife, um, she is going to be using the PS4 like once the PS5 comes out, but she's going to use the PS4 and um, in the bedroom exclusively for streaming because she doesn't she doesn't game. And then I'll have my PS5 oh, okay. for all my games. I thought this was the moment where you reveal that your wife was a Twitch streamer. Oh man, I wish. I keep I keep trying to tell her to do it. You know how much money I can make. <laughs> it's like like just Literally go just on do there. Just nothing, and people will give you hundreds of dollars. Exactly. I'm I'm like the manager. I'm like you just go like you don't even play the game. You just look at the computer screen, and you know I'll whisper some things to you to mention, but I'll play the games in the background. <laughs> just react to other people's content. 
Oh yeah, that too. Like or or like she could like she could be sitting in a chair, but I can be disguised as the chair. You know, like you ever seen those like <laughs> prank videos? I'll I'll be I feel the like chair. The worse the disguise is, the better. Like you're just sitting there, you're like just spray painted in like a wood color. <laughs> exactly. Like the military, like the army face camo, but it's like a wood grain pattern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like my eyes open, they just <laughs> they see the white of my eyes. Like what the hell is that? <laughs> oh man, that would be beautiful. <laughs> I stay trying but to tell anyways. my wife to, um to get on social media to do like you know whether it's Gundam stuff or. Plamo something just because like man I'm, I'm gonna sound like a damn sexist pig but it, it's is true that women just get more views and i'm like you know that money could be really good whenever whenever uh, we retire she don't have to go to an actual job she can stay home and stream i can stay home and stream i'm like power couple but then I, i'll get jealous yeah I'd be like, why does she have well, 100,000 to... subscribers in two goddamn weeks? <laughs> uh, but what I was kind of going to go for with the uh, the whole PS4 thing is what it's going to come down to ultimately is I've heard conflicting reports on how the PS5 is going to handle PS4 games. Because initially, it sounded like it was going to be full backwards compatible. Mm-hmm. And then, more recently, they've been saying that it's only going to be compatible with some games. Well... What some games is that, you know? Is it some PS4 games that are going to get a PS5 version? Are they for some reason only going to make it backwards compatible with some PS4 games? Like, how would that even work? PS4 games are PS4 games. They run on the same hardware. How would some work on PS5 and some not? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. I know. And, like, honestly, if it turns out that it doesn't have backwards compatibility or it's very limited, I will 100% just buy a PS4 anyways because there's actually a lot of other PS4 games that I want to play besides just Maxi Boost. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if you're just going into the Weeboo side of of the PS4, I mean, there's a plethora of of just weird games that you can get into. Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. There's some great (laughs) games on the PS4. Or normal games. Hey, Persona's Weeb. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, Pers- yeah. Persona's, it's mainstream, but it's the game that made everyone weebs. Mm-hmm. And I still haven't played a Persona game. I have played one for a few hours and said this is a really good game and then never got around to finishing it. <laughs> so it wasn't really a good game. It was. It's just that I have a really shit attention span. Mm. Well. And there's so many things that I want to play. There's so many shows I want to watch, so many kits I want to build. That I just have to make tough choices sometimes, and dropping Persona Three was one of those tough choices. Oh yeah, man. Like I, I, I basically skipped Animal Crossing because I understood if I got Animal Crossing, how dare you? There, there's no, there's no like, oh, I'm gonna play for like an hour and I'll stop. There's none of that. You keep playing until you die. New Leaf. Animal Crossing's not a game; it's a lifestyle. Exactly. Like when I played New Leaf, my life was New Leaf for six months at, at minimum. But I was like, I, I can't do that again. I'm like, you know, we got the uh, the CV going on. So I was like, this is the perfect time to get on some Plamo projects. Um, but I did build, not build, but I did buy uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I'm actually playing one chapter a day. And I'm having a time of my life. I kind of was interested in that game just because I've never actually played Final Fantasy VII. And I've always kind of wanted to try it out because it's just such a classic. But then I started hearing that apparently the remake is, like, really, like, kind of deviating from the game in a lot of ways. But I haven't really looked into it, and I'm not familiar enough with the original game to really judge it on that. Well, so I haven't played the original 7 in, I think, about 10 years. Yeah, I think it was about 10 years. I remember playing it when I first joined the... Um, not, well, I played it for, like, the 10th time when I first joined the Marines. Because um, I was, like, in a room alone and... All I had was a damn PS1. Um, but yeah, I, I played it. I played the original not too long ago, um, and it's it's a good game. It's solid. But the dialogue is extremely cheesy, and the remake actually kind of changes a little bit of that. Like, there's still a lot of that cheesy dialogue, um, but they really add more to the characters. Like, I, I never, I didn't care about um, Jesse and, and Biggs and all of them uh, in the beginning of the game. I didn't care about those characters. But in this game, they actually 
really focus a lot more on them to make you like like them or you know make you enjoy their presence a little more um the combat maybe some people are not gonna like the action combat i personally do i like that way better than the set and weight you know style but it's it's really combat in the older games yeah yeah, like, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan, so obviously the the combat style of the remake is something I'm going to be more uh, leaning towards. But, I don't know, man. I, I really love it. The graphics are obviously fantastic. Like, the cutscenes and the regular gameplay is almost seamless. Like, it, it feels like you're playing a giant cutscene. Uh, that is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... With it being a multi-part game, do you feel like the first part that's been released right now has enough content to justify the price tag? Oh, definitely. Um, so I'm I'm about 17 hours in to uh to the game. I think I'm on chapter 11. I don't know how many chapters there there is in the game. Um, it doesn't feel like it's ending anytime soon because I'm only level 21. Uh, I don't even know what the level cap is in the game, but. It feels like I'm probably maybe like 60% into the game right now. I, I think I'm definitely past the halfway point. Um, it's it's really good, though, in terms of like what you can do. Um, some of the characters, like uh, Barrett, for example. Barrett really feels like he is a, def- a Defender class character. But then you look at Tifa, and you can play Tifa different ways. You can play Tifa as a, a primary elemental attacker. Or you can have her as a, a speedy melee attacker or a crit kind of dealer. Um, or you can look at Cloud and you can have him a primary physical attacker. Or he could be a uh, elemental attacker, an uh, elemental magic user. So it's like you can do these different playthroughs with different styles um, de- depending on the loadout and weaponry. So I'm not super familiar with the Final Fantasy games. Is this a very linear game, or is it kind of like something like the newer Zelda games, where there's like all this side stuff you can do and stuff you can mess around with? No, nah, it's super linear. Like, you you, okay. you basically have no choice in in your decisions. So it really is just a play through the story kind of game. Yeah, but it, it's kind of like you're playing all through right. a movie. Like even my, my wife, like she just sits there and watch. Even my kid, my kid, my little inept shit kid, he he'll. <laughs> He'll act up throughout the entire day, throwing things, getting to, into things that he has no business getting into, and I'm yelling at him. But I, I turn on Final Fantasy VII Remake. This kid, no shit. He just, like, I'll give him a little, like, cracker or something like that. He'll eat the cracker, and he'll sit there and watch the entirety of my playthrough. And I'm like, you know what? This game's doing some good for me right now. Can I just say right now how cool it is for your son that he has a intensely detailed catalog of all the cringy shit that his dad used to do when he was little that he could look <laughs> back at when he's in like college and high school. Oh, like man. that is so cool. <laughs> like I'm, I wish I could look back at all the cringy shit my dad did in college. I hope my son doesn't look at that shit. <laughs> I hope he just looks at him like like he watched one video like yeah this ain't for me dad <laughs> and just goes and does his weird shit in two thousand fucking thirty whatever. He's like. So, Dad, why'd you call me an inept shit at 12 minutes into episode 4 of the Crowcast, released in April 2020? <laughs> huh? What's that about? I'd be like, better question is, how'd you find that footage in, in the 2027 Fallout? It's like, it's like, how did you even find that? There's like 3,000 episodes of the Crowcast. <laughs> 2S died five years ago and we replaced him with an AI. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man. Uh, actually, speaking of AIs, I've got a really fun idea for a video that I might actually release uh, later today. Mm-hmm. And if it does end up coming out, um, everyone watching this will know what it is because it'll have been on my channel like a week ago, given the schedule of these episodes of the podcast. Mm-hmm. But um, it's going to be pretty fun, and it will involve AI. That's mm. all I'm going to say about it, because it might end up being a really stupid idea that doesn't work out. And if that's the case, I don't want to get people's hopes up. That's true. You just got to... Gotta pr- um... Stay strong, my brother. <laughs> Just, uh, it's, it's Sunday. Sunday morning for you, right? It's Sunday morning, yes, around 10 o'clock. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you got, you got the whole day. So you can just kind of, like, start planning it, you know, get some of the footage together. You got, you know, one little baby step at a time. Oh, no, it's not that it's overwhelming or anything. I just think it could potentially be a really stupid idea that's not actually entertaining. Yeah. I mean... Who knows? The best thing to do is just put it out there. Yep. I mean, that's what I, what that's goes. what I feel. 
like I feel the same with like most of the videos I put out. I'm like, is anyone gonna watch this? But. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I've did, I've been making a lot of videos lately. I've been trying to make a video whenever I can for the last few days. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw that I basically went from making a video a month to making three videos in four days. So yeah. I have definitely been increasing my output. It's not sustainable, not even remotely, but I want to just get a little burst of content out now so people have something to watch while they're sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, this is and definitely... it's good for me, too, because I'm kind of getting out of practice with a lot of the videography stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, for sure, this is the best time for any content creator to make videos. Like, unless your content is covering basketball games... Then yeah, maybe. Well, you're like a travel vlogger. Yeah, like you're probably screwed. Um, but even like some of the guys um, that are more going out, like Pokemon Go. I watch a lot of Pokemon Go content creators, and I mean they're still doing very creative stuff. Um, you know, since there's the Battle League. Um, but for Gunpla, I mean, all this is is a stay-at-home hobby. So, I mean, I'm imagining a lot of uh, the builders that are content creators, like uh, Zach and it's the Gunpla and all of them. I mean, they're probably like. Hey, I'm, I'm already doing this, you know, home confinement. So might as well just get to building and get to reviewing. Might as well, yeah. I mean, the ad rates are trash, but view wise, it's still doing pretty well. Oh yeah, yeah. I was looking at a couple of uh, builders um, more recently. Uh, EA Gumpla, I think that's his name. Um, I think I've heard. I think I've seen him in my recommended. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. Um, I was watching one of his videos. Ah, uh, fuck, I can't remember the kit that he was working on. Um, but he's really good. And then we got, I think it's Studio G. I've been watching him a lot recently. I do. Mm -hmm. I like his stuff too. He's he's pretty good. I like his editing. Um, oh yeah, fantastic. I had a editing. few critiques of some of his earlier videos, but he actually has seemed to have improved. Mm -hmm. And um, he's kind of. He's kind of working on some of the stuff that I thought was a little bit iffy about the older ones, so I'm really glad to see his channel going along as well as it is. Yeah. And it's crazy to see, because um, he only started three months ago. He like he started his YouTube channel this year, and also looked on his uh, Instagram. His Instagram isn't really that big. I think he has like 3,000 followers. And I mean, how, you know, I don't know how many he had um, you know, when he first started uh, three months ago. But he's already passed 32,000 subscribers. And I'm like, like, wh where does the marketing come in? Like, d does he just share He just share makes good-looking content. Yeah. He just, you look at his thumbnails, and it's just a really professionally shot image of a really beautifully painted kit. People click on it. They get an amazingly edited video with good production quality. It's mm -hmm. just top-notch content. But and there was some critiques I had of some of his older stuff. Like, I thought his editing, I think, was really, really creative. But he would overuse some shots. Like, he would do the shot of him, like, dropping the, p the piece on the table and it, like, explodes. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's a super dope shot. But then he would do it for, like, every single part of the kit, one after the other. And by the eighth time, it just got a little bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. But I think he's kind of learned from that. And he's sort of separating and sep spreading out some of those types of shots and interspersing them with other stuff. So it mm -hmm. never gets too repetitive. True. And I think that's really important because... You can have a great shot, but if that shot is every shot, it just starts to get stale. Hmm. Yeah, I was just really wondering, like, how did he? How did he get big? Like, is it just the work of viral marketing? Like, people seeing it, sharing it, they're sharing it, their friends sharing it, grandma. I think shares some it? of his stuff went viral on other sites because it, you notice in a lot of his videos, he'll like write his name on his finger. Mm-hmm. He does that because people kept stealing his videos and re-uploading them to Facebook. Oh. So I think his videos got into that whole, like, viral video re-uploading circle, and mm -hmm. they really took off in there. Okay. <sighs> and once, but I guess fortunately through that, somehow people managed to still find his actual channel and give him the recognition that he deserved for it, which is great, because it mm -hmm. really pisses me off when people just steal, like, random cool-looking videos on the internet and re-upload them to Facebook. Oh yeah, that's like that's like commonplace on Facebook. Yeah, I, mean, I sometimes like, wonder if people do that with my stuff, but I honestly despise Facebook to the point where I would never even bother going there to look for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know about Facebook, but I know on like certain uh stores, like um, there's a couple of stores in Thailand actually that um put my URL video on uh whatever the product was that I reviewed, and they wouldn't consult with me, but 
what I notice is I allow that to happen because uh, there's like that little setting that you can edit on your uh, your channel. Well, not your channel, but the... You can allow uh, embedded links or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I can only blame myself. So it's not really stealing. They're just kind of like, hey, yeah. he's allowing it. <laughs> I mean, that's. I don't think that's really that big an issue, too. No, because it, it, it's... The thing is, like, if they click it's the... It's not like they're stealing your content. They're just publicly displaying it. Yeah, like, it, it's it's for a good cause. Like, I'm not really butthurt because if a person's looking at that kit and they're like, fuck, I don't know if I really want to get it, and then on that same page they see my video and they click on it, um, it's obviously not leading to my channel. It's just going to play right there on the, the page. But at least I can yeah. hopefully give an informed decision. I mean, you start your videos by saying, hey, this is Krosama, so it's not like they won't know who you are. That's true. Yeah. Like, they know your username. They obviously can tell it's a YouTube video. You say like and subscribe at the end. You know, mm. if they're actually interested enough to look for your channel, it doesn't make it hard for them to find it. In fact, with the way embedded YouTube videos work, they can literally just cl click on the title of the video on the top, and it'll take them to YouTube anyways. So oh, okay. it's really not that big an issue. Well, that's pretty good then. Well, speaking of YouTube, aren't you about to hit uh, 30,000? I am. I believe I'm just a few hundred shy, or maybe like 50. It's, I'm either 500 shy or 1,500 shy. I'll have to check my analytics. Well, I'm, about to, I'm about to check right now because I'm on my little sub feed. I am. Oh, never mind. I am 60 subscribers shy, oh. meaning that by the time you watch this podcast, people at home, I will definitely have over 30,000 subscribers. Mm -mm. I did not realize how many subscribers I gained in the last few days. Because well, it is at 29.9. Well, definitely an early congratulations to you, good sir. Very well deserved. Thank you. It's uh, it's interesting because actually when I first started doing the Gunpla News, I started gaining subscribers really, really fast. And I was getting like 1,000 subs a month. And I was like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Like, I'll be at like 25,000 subscribers by this summer. And then it actually took me like two years to reach it. And then like another year to reach 30,000 um, but you know what? I kind of blame myself for that because my upload schedule is sort of trash. Mm -hmm. um, so I just keep pumping out content. Um, I try different stuff. Um, I find, unfortunately, a lot of times with the kind of especially with Gumpla, um, people really only want to see like one type of content. So like if you're if if you're not making news and reviews, like it gets like no views. But mm -hmm. I make it anyways. You know, a little bit of views is still something. Yeah. And yeah. Does that make you like frustrated that um, you know if if you branch out a little bit too much from what your uh, original source like content is, um, that it just won't draw attention and like you won't get the views? Really? I mean, it doesn't frustrate me because people aren't watching it. It makes me a little bit disappointed that there's people that are literally only interested in that one specific thing. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't necessarily mind it. Um, worst comes to worst, I can always just make a second channel for other stuff. So. It doesn't. I wouldn't say it really frustrates me. It's a little disappointing. Um, it did. It sometimes gets frustrating, like with with the Bawaku boxes. Like at first, those had decent views, and then the viewership started to taper off. Uh, but I don't really, I don't really fault anyone watching for that because the videos themselves were getting kind of stale after a while. Like I could tell just by uh, by like even by watching them myself that like you can only watch someone open a box of random gunpla like so many times before it starts to get boring mm -hmm. and that's why i, I kind of would like change up the videos and stuff and kind of do some different editing things and some fun stuff with them um which a lot of people probably missed out on because they just tuned out because they thought they were more of the same but uh that's okay um i ended up ultimately phasing those out anyways mm -hmm. and that's something that i find myself doing a lot with my content is um I will start doing something that people like, but then I'll kind of stop doing it, not because I don't like it anymore, but just because I feel like it gets kind of stale if I just keep doing it over and over. Mm -hmm. Like, that thing that I used to do in my old videos where I would do, like, the really rapid-fire articulation segment, like on the RG Unicorn review, that was, like, super fun, and people liked it. I liked it for a little while. It was kind of almost like a brand thing for me where that was, like, kind of my thing. But I mm -hmm. stopped doing it because after, like, four or five kits, it just got boring. Like, it was like, yeah, I did it. It was fun, but I, I did it, you know? I've A lot of times with YouTube, I feel like it kind of encourages you 
to just do the same shit over and over again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, even if I make a video that looks really cool or is in a really distinctive style, I've done it. Like, I've made that video already. I don't want to make it 20 more times. Yep. So um, that kind of puts me in a weird space. Especially with stuff where, especially if the video happens to do, like, really, really well. Um, like, I am, I am eventually going to come back to the Total Beginner's Guide to Gunpla. Um, probably no one believes me when I say that, but it's true. It's going to happen. I mean, the video's got, like, almost 400,000 views by now. It's insane. Um, in fact, it probably has more than 400,000 views by this point. Um, but, yeah, like, that was something that was just a summer project that I wanted to work on. Um, I probably shouldn't have said part one because I was planning on having multiple parts, and I never actually really got around to those. That was, that was I think, the biggest mistake I made there because if I just made it a standalone video, people would have probably been fine with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's the whole thing. I'm going to get, I'm going to get to that eventually. And honestly, whenever I do finish that series, episode two and episode three and whatever else I make of it, they're not going to be like episode one. Um, I'm not going to make like that exact style of video just because again, like I've been saying, I already made that video. As far as I'm concerned, that, that piece, that, that, I don't want to call it a work of art because that sounds pretentious as fuck, but like that project is done. I did the thing. I wanted to make a video in that style. I made it, and I'm happy with how it came out. Mm -hmm. um, same kind of thing with the uh, like the Master Grade Read to Z review. Like everyone wants, a lot of people want to see more videos like that. They want to see more second opinion. I'm not at all opposed to making more reviews of kits that people think are shit. Um, it just won't be in that style. Yeah. Um, and that's just how that's just how I make stuff. Um, and I think it from a YouTube like not really like a business standpoint but just general popularity standpoint i feel like it does hurt me sometimes because you know that's not what youtube wants but that's just how i make videos and that's just how, just how it works for me yeah I, I mean i definitely agree but just do what makes you happy like like even if even if the people just aren't viewing in as often um as they are with like the news content videos i mean it could be a learning curve to see like maybe where you're faulting to not uh, get the attention or maybe it's just, you know, something that is uh, with your core audience. So you might have to do it in repetition in order to gain that new audience that wants to, to see those type of videos. Kind of. I just don't like doing stuff in repetition. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. know. I'll, this is just some stuff that I've been thinking about and kind of, kind of been bouncing around in my head for a while mm -hmm. um yeah kind of went more into more into depth with it than i meant to but whatever you know that's just kind of how i how i feel about the youtube thing yeah well i mean regardless um yeah, if you just do your news stuff i mean that's like that's still great like whenever i you know i look at your videos the news segments it's like i'm definitely getting informed about what's coming up and a lot of details that i just don't read about because I, I might just look at a picture maybe maybe look at a date but you'll go a little bit further in depth, uh, which is something a lot of the you know, viewers are actually going to appreciate. Yeah, and I try to do that. It's just a little bit disappointing sometimes to see that uh, kind of timing trumps quality in a way where like those news videos, which are kind of very low effort to make, I just shit them out in like four hours. And if I make one soon enough, it'll get like 20,000 views. And then mm -hmm. I could work on something like, you know, the second opinion read Z video, which took an entire summer to make, and it'll get like, 5,000 views over the course of a year. Yeah. So that kind of thing gets disappointing sometimes. So I kind of have, I've kind of more recently had to just find a balance where like, okay, I got to find a way to make this content in a way where the, uh, the amount of work I put into it isn't so high that it feels like a waste if, you know, it just doesn't take off. But at the same time, I'm putting enough into it to where I really actually feel proud of the end result. And <laughs> it's definitely, it's a challenging balance, but I find, I find almost like looking for that balance to be as fun and rewarding as like going all into it because it's like kind of like how if you give yourself a set of boundaries when you're making a project you can sometimes come up with something more interesting or creative because you can't literally just do anything mm -hmm. yes yeah, that's, that's pretty frustrating Like, I've been sitting um, up in my room and, like, with the new um, Zoids video. It's like, there's a lot of other things I wanted to do. Um, and some things I were uh, or I was going to do, but I was like, man, I'm, I'm treading on that, like, it's, it's borderline copying other YouTubers and what they do and their style. 
I was like, I don't want to do that. So I'm like racking my brain about how to actually make my content super unique. Um, it's, it's definitely hard um, in just the grand scheme of Gumpla content creators because it's like everyone's all, like is eventually going to get to the point to where they're doing something that is overlapping with another YouTuber. Like even when I watch EA um, Gumpla, um, uh, who else was there? Um, not not as much Maker N. He's kind of more unique. Uh, but even like Studio G, I'm like, there's a lot of similarities between the two. And I usually get them kind of mixed up um, just because of the way that they do their videos. But it's frustrating. I mean, here's how I feel about that sort of thing. If they're not literally plagiarizing like the exact script and or exact video theme of another creator, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with multiple creators having a similar style. I don't think it's like lazy or uncreative. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I just see it as more content in that style. So if you like Creator A, give Creator B a shot. They make similar stuff about different kits. I see that as a win. Yeah. Um, but that's just how I look at it. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what filmmakers do. You got the... Um, uh, I forgot the damn dude's name. He, he releases like complete shit movies right when a big budget movie is uh, about to release. Oh, the uh, Asylum Pictures? Yeah. So, I mean, some of them are actually okay. Like uh, Planet Terror. That's not the... That's not even close to the analogy that I was going for, but okay, that's... That's fine. Well, it's um, like I meant more like how, um, like how if you enjoy, you know, Mario, you'll also enjoy, I don't know, Rayman. Crash Bandicoot or something. Like yeah. how you'd enjoy multiple games in similar genres. Okay. Yeah. And it's not like oh, you know, Rayman or Crash Bandicoot is a Mario knockoff. They're just similar games that have a similar style to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair to say. But even then, man, it's it's kind of rough because, um, like, I, I'm not necessarily like trying to like compete in a way like I like um, how can I say it. I'm not trying to like say, uh, oh, these guys are horrible. You know, like you know, mine's gonna be superior. It's like uh, you know, we all definitely coexist. But it's like I'm I'm also sitting here wondering what it is I need to do to take my stuff to that level that they're already at. I mean, it's the same way with, like, any industry, you know, when, it, when it's your work environment, even for the Marine Corps. You know, I'm doing this all the time with the Marines because we're competing on a, you know, daily basis. I'm like, hey, this guy's doing this, this, and this. I need to do that plus more so that way I can be competitive for promotion, so on and so forth. Um, and with Gunpla, it's like I, I, I'm always racking my brain around what do people want to see? And it's like I see Mecha Gaikotsu. And I'm like, he does a pretty energetic, stylistic, uh, out-of-box review. Gets good reviews. Gr you know, is almost uh, revered as the greatest YouTuber that ever existed in terms of Gunpla. Then you go to Zach. And here's what kind of disappoints me about Mechagai Kotsu. Is here's the th I feel kind of conflicted about him because he was actually one of my biggest inspirations when I first started taking YouTube seriously. Mm -hmm. And the reason what I loved about his older videos is they were so concise. Like, he was... They were, they were very heavily edited, but in a very snappy way, like, boom, 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 boom. Here's everything you need to know about this kit in, like, five, six minutes. Yeah. And, like, that was it. And that was every video, and it was awesome. And now you look at his videos, and it's, like, 16 minutes long, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 12 minutes for an option set. You know, it's just, like, he still has that energy. He still talks fast, but I feel like there's a lot more filler in it to kind of pad out the videos and it doesn't quite have that like razor sharp super condensed informative feel that it used to have which mm -hmm. is really a bummer um because yeah. i used to really enjoy his videos for that yeah um it also feels like he's a little disconnected from the community like uh maybe it's just my mind but like when i see all these different um sponsors and he's and it's like has no affiliation with gumpla in general it really feels like a little disingenuous, but I also get that... I don't fault him for taking sponsors, like, yeah. at all. I, I, From what I've understood of Mechiai Kotsu recently is he has kind of accepted that he's treating this like a job mm -hmm. and not a hobby. Like, I, I'm, like, 90% sure this just is his full-time job, and he's just doing what it takes to make a living, and I respect him for that. Like, I yeah. get it. You know, you do you. If this is your job, great, you know... 
he probably does he probably enjoy it as much now as he did five years ago probably not but you know what if he enjoys it enough if he's making good money off of it good for him Mm -hmm. well i mean that raid shadow legend sponsorship must be pretty good (laughs) because he's doing it repeatedly i mean like if he's asking for a for a worthwhile price for it sure Mm -hmm. but Oh, did you see that? Um, not to get too much into the Raid Shadow Legends drama, but uh, did you see that tweet from like? I, th- I mean, I guess it's kind of old news by now, so I probably probably no point going to this. But the tweet where the uh, the Raid Shadow Legends account said that they don't pay crea- creators to promote their product. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you know, these creators aren't doing it out of the the, the goodness of their heart. <laughs> And, like, every YouTuber knows that's bullshit because everyone who hasn't done a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship has gotten approached for a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship and every single time they've been offered money. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been... I have had maybe, like, six sponsors approach me in my entire lifetime on YouTube and Raid Shadow Legends is the only one to do it twice. (laughs) And, like, my channel in YouTube terms is, like, nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, 30,000 subscribers doesn't mean jack on YouTube. And they're still interested enough in promoting their product to the widest net possible that they're willing to approach me twice about it. Man, and you you skipped out all all those all those digits, all them zeros. I mean, I'm not just because it's generally bad form. I'm not going to talk about exactly how much they offered me, but let's just say it was a not not even like a whole lot less for a sponsor that I'm not interested in. It was a lot less than I would take for literally any sponsor. Mm. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't, I don't like going to numbers like that. I think it's kind of kind of disrespectful to not necessarily raid specifically, but just generally sponsors when you go like, oh, yeah, I take this much for this person. I charge this guy this much. Like, no, I don't. I'm not about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to say that they're uh, they're definitely uh, lowballing a bit with the with the lower end YouTubers that they think will do the job for less. Yeah, that's true. But all right, well, we're kind of getting closer. We'll pretty much at like a uh, what, hour, about an hour in or so. Um, uh, hour, hour and a half ish. All right. Um, well, I think this would be a good time. We, oh, go ahead. We spend very little time talking about the actual topic we came here to talk about, and mostly just talked about like YouTube and creativity yeah. for an hour, but. <laughs> Well, we did talk about recent like actually, purchases and, and current projects. Yeah, we could actually turn it back around to that real quick before we end. So, aside from the Barbatos Lupus Rex, was there anything you wanted to talk about? Like yeah, um, I kind of want to talk about the like upcoming re- uh, releases and like this month and next month. Uh, sure. Like we could go super fast over that, like just a little rapid fire sec- segment. Okay. So uh, this month is pretty much halfway done. A little bit more than halfway. But that um the Gundam GP I don't even know how to pronounce that is like Rasha ten GP or race ten I think yeah Ross ten any thoughts on that I think it looks I think it's an interesting design but the mold itself is just crap oh okay uh, just drags the whole thing down I don't know I've I've seen a custom painted uh, build of it which was in the actual GPO two colors and even that didn't save it like in terms of design I don't think it looks good in any color. I think the design is just horrid. I like what they did with the shoulders. I think it's kind of creative. Um, I'm not a fan of the GPO2 design in general. It's probably one of my least favorite Gundams. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for like there's some creativity there. There's some cool designs. And that's what I like to see out of a build series. It's just disappointing to see them not like doing more to bring that mold up to the modern standard. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing I noticed. So far, the Re-Rise series has been very lackluster in terms of kits. Um, I think I own two or three Re-Rise kits in total. I think here's the problem with Re-Rise. Is it all comes down to the planet system. Because when there's so many different planet armors, that's consumed a lot of their budget. Yeah. So really, when you look at the Re-Rise line as a whole... And you look at how they've kind of inflated the number of kits in the line by taking the build custom kits and putting them in the main line. And they've kind of like padded out the line as much as they can. When you really strip out all that stuff, you take out the SD, you take out the mobile doll, you take out all the build custom sets, you take out all the planted armors. They've released like four kits that Mm. aren't one of those things. And I don't think necessarily in general they're worse. It's just that there's such a small sample size of them 
that when only one of the four kits is really bad, it makes the whole line look worse as a whole when there's so few to choose from. Well, I mean, you also had the new Zeon, which that, it's, that's just bad. Um, I would say the mobile like, doll may. The thing. Was that? Yeah, but that's a mobile doll. That's not really a high grade. Like, I feel like like it's a high grade in the literal sense of the word, but you know that when people are looking for high grade gunplay, like, that's not really what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. They want mecha, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, there's only the like, thing. a handful, so. Yeah, I, I agree. Looking at re rise. Taking out the planet armors, taking out the build customs, the SDs in May. It's literally just Justice Knight, New Zeon, Selt Sam, Eldora, Tertium, and GLs. And the Race 10. And I mean, when you look at those, like, how pretty- many out of those are, like, actually good kits? Oh. Uh, like, Tertium, May- Justice Knight's good, Tertium's, I guess, kind of okay. Mm-hmm. Eldora Brute, I thought was okay, and then I learned that the entire body is just a single static piece. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, really, I mean, there's just not a lot of great kits in the line, unfortunately. No, because I think I only own two of the core Gundam ones, and I, well, I own the Salt Sam, but I'm I'm getting rid of that. That's already in the box, getting ready to get sent away somewhere. It's pretty much just Justice Knight. Like, out of what they've released, Justice Knight is really the only one that's not a core Gundam that I could say is actually a pretty decent kit. And even then, it's not, like, amazing. It's just, like, okay. Yeah. Like, if that came out in Build Fighters Try, I would have been like, yeah, that's a good kit. What's next? You know. Yeah, it's, it's definitely no uh, no Bill Fighters though. Bill Fighters has some pretty pretty slamming kits. I've also noticed with um, kind of the Build Fighters versus Build Divers thing is that Build Divers is um, they're doing a lot less mold reuse now. Mm-hmm. Um, like a lot of its new molds. In fact, almost all of its new molds. Still doesn't help it. <laughs> I mean, like, in terms of articulation, I feel like oh, it that's going to be great, away, but the Cell Sam It takes away a good. little bit of the fun. It takes away a little bit of the fun of the build series, because part of the coolness of it was, like, oh, you know, like, which of these newly, re- which of these recent high grades are they going to make a build version of? Like, oh, I hope they do a build Sand Rock. I hope they do a build Maganac. Like, wouldn't it be cool if they do this or that? Mm-hmm. And there was that whole speculation aspect. And now that's basically gone, because we know that, like, 99% of the kits in the line are going to be brand new molds. Yeah. So it's like, well... I mean, now it's no more fun than speculating for any other Gundam series. Well, now it's kind of the opposite. They make new mold, but it's for a kit that hasn't released in you know in a more recent uh, line. So um, the Ultron, for example, what was it the um, the hell was that the one? Geon Ultron. Yeah. So it was, it was like we had that, and I'm like, oh shit, there might be a, a mold for uh, the Ultron Gundam in the future, which we still don't know. Uh, but I also think it's the Cell Sam. It's 100 percent still happening. Oh, yeah, it has to. <laughs> I mean, if it took the R. Jarja three, four years to come out, you know, who knows when we're getting the Ultron. Mm-hmm. Hopefully in, hopefully but next it's year. it's going to come out. Because we, we've already got Sand Rock last year, so I'll, <clears throat> I'll, I'll take it next year. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. All right, uh, well, just moving down the line of, uh, of other new kits, we got the RG Force Impulse coming out next week. I've turned around on that kit. I am now all for it and can't wait to build one. I'm gonna get it, but I'm I'm, I'm telling you right now, I might sell it after I build it because I don't know. I'm just I'm not 100 percent feeling it. I love it. the look. I love the detail. I love that it does all the mechanical stuff right. It's mm-hmm. got the color separation down. It looks great. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping when I build it, it's gonna change my mind because I definitely I want to love it. I just I think it will. I think you'll like it. We'll see in the review. I'm not going to hold anything back. And honestly, I as much as I want this, I know we've recently gotten, for the first time in like, you know, 20 years, we've finally gotten the full team of Impulse Gundams at both scales. You know, we got the Blast and the Sword and all that, thanks mm-hmm. to PB and I. I don't care about any of those as long as I can get a real great Sword and Blast Impulse. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. Like that is That is the Impulse team that I want to complete. Mm-hmm. I don't... If you asked me, you know, up two months ago, I would have said master grades, but that real grade, that's the impulse I want to see a full set of. That's the impulse that I want to have a full set of. Mm-hmm. Dude, I would love a RG sword impulse because, like, the, the master grade's good. It's it's fine for what it is, but it's it feels dated. But 
Get an RG, an updated RG. Ooh, oh boy, it's going straight on the shelf. All right, next we got the Ars Earthly Gundam, the enemy Gundam, I guess. Oh yeah, the uh, the Alice Earth Three. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's another core Gundam. I don't really care about this one. I'm more interested in the Outer Planet armors than in the enemy ones. Yeah. Uh, this one in particular, I've, I'm I'm a little bit more sold on it. I, I think it, I think it does look very interesting, but I'm mostly sold on the new um, Gundam like armors that's going to come with it. Well, not come with it, but uh, you can get separately and put it on it. So that's primarily the reason I'm getting it in the first place. I don't know. I'd have to see some more armors for it. And also there's the fact that you can just put the enemy new Gundam armor on a core Gundam, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, that's, that's pretty cool. I'll have to try that. I mean, all the armors... I mean, if the enemy Earth 3 armor is interchangeable, I don't see why the new Gundam armor wouldn't be. Oh, I, I was just figuring... Unless the faceplate has to work with the Alice core. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know case. how how inter, um, how compatible the armors are with one another since the core Gundam suit for both of them are pretty pretty vastly different, at least from what I've seen. Different aesthetically, but they have all the same connection points is the thing. Oh, like the feet move back and everything, like the same way? Yeah, it transforms exactly the same way, it's just cosmetically different. Oh. They've literally shown official images of them wearing each other's armor. Oh, okay. Well, I'm on then. Well, moving on to next month, um, I'll try to be a little quicker. Um, we have the... It's the orange armor for the uh, core Gundam? I don't know what it's called, though. We don't have a name for it yet. Oh, we don't? Um, okay. There's speculation that could go either way about what planet it is. Yeah, I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I think um, I was talking with MJ about it, and he suggested that since when you see that shot at the end of the new opening where they show all the planet armors lined up, mm. all the ones that we know are lined up in the order of the planets in real life, would suge which would suggest that the orange one is Saturn. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the only evidence we really have for it, though. Yeah, I mean... I'm all about it. Um, I'll definitely... I, I like the weapon, because it sucks that you got to buy the weapon separately, like most of the other um, core suits. Yeah. But that, like, pile that's driver kind of spear breaker. thing looks amazing. Yeah, that's cool, but that is kind of the deal breaker for the, the outer armors for me, is I would buy all three of them if I didn't have to buy three Revan Gundams to complete them. As it stands, I'm going to be thinking a lot harder about the orange and Stargazer-style armors. Mm-hmm. I would recommend people wait because much like they did with the um, the the Double O Sky Gundam, they made a full package one uh, eventually. So if, if yeah, for the Ace. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure these are going to get that full package treatment eventually. But. Maybe I don't know. It's a bit harder to believe with this because there um, there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different planet forms as opposed to the. The double O double O diver, which was really just one Gundam. Yeah, we'll see though. I mean, I'm all for it if uh, if they release them in bundles. Um, I'll I'll probably pick up the ones that I'm missing, uh, which uh, it's actually quite a few. Though I know the white one that had like the beam shields. I didn't pick that one up. Um, That's actually one of the few that I have. Okay. Um, I kind of armor swapped it around with the uh, with the Earth three to make kind of break up the colors a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that, that blue with the white would look really good. Yeah, it does, actually. Um, and I gotta say, that planet gimmick, the way you can kind of swap around and combine armors with each other, is mm -hmm. actually really fun to mess around with. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't built enough core Gundams to really do that, so I'll I'll have to do it once I get my collection up. Make a little video I of it. I will say, though, it's fun to mess around with, but you shouldn't really, like, repeatedly mess around with them too much, because a lot of the connections are kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. Especially the forearms. Okay. And the shoulders. Yeah, the shoulders are held on by friction, which is weird. But <sighs> next, next we have is the the new core Gundam um, that we've seen in the the recent episodes. Um, I don't know, uh, Uraven is that how it's uh, called? Uraven, because it's like Uranus Seven. Okay. That one looks good. I'm gonna pick that one up uh, next month. Hopefully, oh, it's, yeah. hopefully it's in the beginning of May. Um, not going not gonna to paint it, though. But I'll pick it up. Um, I mean, I don't think it needs paint. I think it's just a cool-looking kit as is. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's basically a toy at this point. 
pretty much. I mean, it's I, and I don't even care. It's just a cool design. Mm-hmm. Um, that and the that Triage Magnum are like the oh. two that I'm most excited for out of Rerise. Dude, I'm so broken hearted that I got pushed back. <laughs> yeah, like that that kit was one of the kits that I was most looking forward to. Mm-hmm. That oh, I'll, and I'll the MG the shit Curios. Out of it. Those are like my two. Those are my two like top hype kits right now. Mm-hmm. Dude, that Age Mag, uh, the Age, um, the Tri Age. Sorry. The, the Tri-Age Magnum, I'm going to paint that in those uh, original colors. Like, it, it, it just oh, it looks so oh, much like better like that. the Classic Age colors, okay. Huh? So, like, the tri- the uh, the Classic Age colors? Yeah, well, yeah, so, like, the, the Tri-Age has, like, its original Tri-Age colors. The Magnum that's slapped on it is just the colors. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw that promo video for it where they showed the old colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely doing that. Oh, that's... That one's actually going to be a clean build. I'm not going to do any weathering. It's just going to go clean right on the shelf. Of course. Why would you dirty up something that beautiful? Well, I'm going to dirty up the age one um, normal master grade whenever I get another one. Eventually. But uh, So next we have the Wyndham. Windham. Oh, absolutely I'm getting that. That's a great looking kit. Same goes for the Infinite Justice. I like it. Like I love the V-Fin. Like that thing is huge and it looks super wicked. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I might, I might, I might buy it. Have you seen Neo's version of it? No. So there's a pilot. There's an ace pilot named Neo that uses the Wyndham, and he actually has a purple jet Wyndham. It looks really good. Ooh, purple look good. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, almost gave me kind of like uh, Love Phantom sort of vibes. Mm, Okay. Yeah, uh, this one may, this one could be a painted build. Wait, what, in May, what the hell's, oh, mm, yeah, May's going to be a uh, Mega Man and Vintage theme, so I'm, I'm, I might be able to slip this one in, into a painted build. All right. But next, uh, we got High Grade Infinite Justice. Another, another buy. Really looking forward to it. Jesus I love Christ. my destiny. I can't wait to have an infinite justice to go with it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pick up the old stri- the uh, the strike freedom revive, so I have like the whole team. Okay. I'd really actually like to get the uh, the PB and I version of the strike freedom that has like all the effect parts and stuff. The high grade or the real grade? The high grade. The high grade that has like the full burst effects. Yeah. The PB and I one. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I have an extra of the real grade effect parts. Um, just don't know what to do with them. I'm not. I'm not buying another RG, uh, RG Strike Freedom. But, That's fair. Yeah. Um. Next, Master Grade Gundam uh, Curios. Oh, do I even have to say anything? <laughs> no, I think I think everyone and their mom's buying this one. Um, yeah, that that's instant buy for everyone. Yeah, I would say it's not as hyped as um as Dynamis. But it's it's still it's not as hyped as Dynamis because Dynamis came out of nowhere and yeah. Curios came out of Dynamis. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of funny. Like Mecha Guy Kotsu is kind of right. <laughs> like he he's not one hundred percent right about box art shit being like oh that's the next thing coming out. But I mean he we gotta give him credit. He was right about you know saying uh, Curios was uh, gonna be out next. Seeing Mastery Dynamis get revealed was like having your dad come home after leaving for milk ten years ago, and then Curios is like having him come home next week. It's like, yeah, it's still cool that dad's back, but it's not quite as hype as the first time. He's <laughs> like, oh, like I think he's gonna be gone a little bit longer. Oh, well, welcome back. <laughs> and pretty much next um, after that, the rest of the month is thirty minute mission stuff, which looks really good. You got a lot of the um, the plane vehicle modes. Uh, you got some other optional oh, I'm work try to armors. Pick up one of those. Hmm. I'm gonna try to pick up the plain one. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get one of those too because it just it looks wickedly cool and it, it it's a good standalone kit, honestly. Um, you got some Ultraman shit, but not interested in that. Uh, but one thing I do want to touch on, they got the customized bases uh, that are actually like the hangar bases for 30 minute missions that is coming out next month. That vaguely rings a bell, but I don't know if I've seen that much of those before. Uh, are those yeah. the ones that are, like, stackable? Yeah. They're, so, like, action bases, but you can, like, stack them up? Yeah. So you can do, like, like different layers. Um, so if you want, like, um, how, like if you want it to be completely vertical, you can stack them all, kind of like the uh, the uh, NX Edge 
stuff. You can just stack it all in a vertical kind of manner. And uh, oh, okay, I did see those. Yeah, those look kind of interesting, actually. Although mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think they look quite as good as like those. What is it like the wave chain bases that a lot of people use? But I yeah. still think they're pretty cool. Yeah, it's not as good as uh, the Kotobukiya Wave or there's like another brand out there that does them. Um, but I think it's something that's it's good for smaller um, like smaller builds. So if you are going to do like a 30 minute mission and you really don't want to spend 20 plus bucks on a base just for that 130 minute mission kit, this is something that can suffice. I mean, even for like straight I mean, when builds, it comes it look to cheap good. bases. You can just get an action base too, but well, it, it's an action base as well. Because uh, let's see, oh, maybe okay, maybe oh, it doesn't come with the connection with to, to. Yeah, I don't think it can stand. Okay, but you get little like it looks like weapon holders. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with this. Um, I'll pick up one just okay. to review it. Um, but something I've been wanting to do, and I, I actually have space to do this now. Um, I wanted my videos to go through like a transition of the review. So the beginning transition is receiving the, the model kit. You receive the model kit and then I go through the stages of building and that goes into the desk work area where you see me building it. And then from here, it's going to go to the hangar and I want to actually paint a hangar pretty much knocking off what uh, it's a Gumpla does where he has his big old hangar where he space. has like the whole painted diorama. Yeah, that is, that is a really cool look. It's it's beautiful, and he did he did a fantastic job, even with like the LEDs. So I'm like, I kind of want to take that, and so when it when the kit's finished, it goes directly to the hangar. From the hangar, I could talk about details in a more static pose. It's not actually going to do any, anything dynamic. It's just going to have like the workers kind of fixing things, and the workers are going to help me narrate what I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about the head, there's going to be some workers working on the head, and then moving down to the body, you're going to see like workers working on the body, so on and so forth. From there, it's going to go to uh, the black the black uh, backdrop where I do the articulation, move it, and then from there, it's going to go to the the town for action. That actually sounds really cool. Um, it sounds like a lot of work per video, um, so I feel I don't know how that would like affect the volume of videos you could make, mm-hmm. but um, I think it would be definitely worth giving a shot. Yeah, I just got to start building bases and painting them. <laughs> and, and already with the shit I'm painting, I'm, I'm what I'm estimating to do. I'm not gonna do it this month, just because I got. There's always is a fucking lot of things. Like, I, I've never realized the HMM line has so many damn parts. But um, I'll start it next month. Oh yeah, they're basically master grades, maybe even a little above master grade. Oh yeah, they're well above master grade level. Like, they're not perfect grade level, but they're they're knocking on that door. Um, but since next month, hundred real grade perhaps. Well, not in, not in terms of um, engineering, just the amount of parts. Like, there's just so... It's like, the parts in there is like this... Probably the same amount as like... Um, maybe the Unicorn full armor? Maybe? Or maybe like a Master Grade Sananju? Because it's like... Just a, it's so a like a, a really big Master Grade. Yeah, essentially. But... Alright, alright. But yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm going to try and paint, like build and paint one hangar uh, a month. I think that should suffice. And then I'll just slowly build that hangar, you know, backdrop. But Yeah, I mean, I could see that working. I mean, more, I meant more like the, uh, like the amount of footage and stuff you have to shoot per video. Mm-hmm. Depending on how many reviews you're doing per month, that could get really overwhelming really fast. Yeah. Uh, I'm already transitioning like out of... If you're doing, like... If you're doing, like, two, three reviews a month, that could work. But if you're trying to do, like, the Zaku Relius thing where you review, like, almost everything that comes out, that's going to be a... Uh, that's going to be a... That's going to be really rough. hmm Yeah, it, I'm already kind of wanting... Like, I'm actually wanting to uh, lessen my um, video output. Like, I, I think I, I already put out a pretty decent amount of uh, videos in a good succession um but i think if, if i really want to get the viewership that i'm i'm desiring as well as like the spawn uh, the subscribers and everything i'm gonna have to like up the quality or make my stuff a little bit more unique and um there, there's also another idea and I've, I've talked about in the discord about um basically having a shop so it's, it's like what uh Santa Massacre does with the rental reviews i don't know if you're familiar with them no i'm not 
um, enlighten me. So basically what they do is um, they have a um, a rental shop. It's not like a real rental shop. It's more of like a, a, a prop. It's a, it's a set. And um, they review movies, but in a theme of like a person's coming in to rent the movie. And he's like, hey, you're, you're renting this movie? He's like, yeah. Like, you want to talk about it? And like, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen this guy before. Yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about mm-hmm. now. Yeah, that is actually a cool idea. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, got, I I didn't recognize the name, but I get it now that you're talking about it. I definitely remember seeing him. Yeah, like, they're hilarious, and the production quality is, is fantastic. So, I'm like, you know, I don't see that with Gundam at all. Like, I don't think there's any Gun, Gunpla, um, like, YouTuber that does that style. So, you know, I, I kind of cleaned up the area, and what I'm thinking about doing is, um, basically, I, when a new kit comes out, and this will only be for new kits, uh, probably not for old kits, but a kit will come in, and it's like, hey, you know, uh, our shop uh, just got a new shipment, and here's the new, sh- you know, the, the new kit, and it would be a mixture of me and Steve, kind of just like, you know, talking back and forth, and you know, he he he'll be more of like the uh, critical person, like talking shit about the kit. I'll kind of be a little bit more of like, hey, you know, it's not that bad, and uh, you know, it'll, okay, it'll have like the regular cool. footage like I already normally do, but I, I think that will be fine. To kind of just like break up the way I already do my videos, right? I mean, we'll see. It's it's more of um, hopeful thinking at this point. I'm actually trying to find a uh, a video that I think is kind of similar to what you're talking about. Um, we can continue talking. I'll just look for it in the background. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, I, I'm, I'm I keep thinking about it, and I'm like, I can make it really fun. Um, the problem is I don't have a cast, <laughs> so it's like it's just going to be me and Steve. Um, but I think it can be okay if I really just um, if I really focus a lot on the set. If I make the set really believable that it is an actual Gundam shop, and I am receiving an order, and you know maybe even have like um, un- you know uniforms for my shop, like you know call it the Crow's Nest or some shit, and have like a little name tag. The link uh, I just tag. sent you. The link I just sent you is from a run of commercials that band I did in the mid two thousands. And it's basically exactly what you're talking about. Although it is technically a commercial and not a review. Hmm. Well, I see um Kawaguchi's in it. Oh that's not Kawaguchi, yep. no more. Or no, wait, no, that yeah, that isn't him. But that it takes it's the same thing. It's like a little dramatized skit that takes the form of like these two people at a hobby shop, and the shop owner is like showing her how cool this new kid is. Yes, exactly this. This is what I want to do. All right, cool. So that is kind of what you're going for. Mm-hmm. Like I already got the table. Um, I got I got the uh, the new type apron. I can wear that, <laughs> and. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to get a rack so I could put some boxes on a on, like on a rack the same style as in that video. Um, just oh yeah, yeah. But I can order it from Amazon. But I'm like, I'm not trying to spend seventy bucks on a very nice rack. I'm trying to just get one from local, but no one has it. But yeah, that commercial is exactly what I want it. Um, I'll, I'll put it in. I'll put um, it in the uh, the podcast just that way people can see what we're talking about. Yeah, sure. It's 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 like this was like I I only know this because I like came across it when I was looking for old Gundam commercials. But this was like they did like this whole series of commercials that were kind of a story about these two these two characters, mm-hmm. and that was like a from like two thousand five ish two thousand six. Okay. All right. Well, that pretty much summarizes everything I have. Uh, you got anything like final words or anything else? No, I mean that's pretty much it. Um, not a super high quality episode today. Just wanted to kind of hang out and talk, break up the boringness of being in isolation in the house. You mm-hmm. know. Well, I definitely hope everyone is doing good. Um, you know, I know this is like weird, very weird times that we're living in currently. <laughs> Things even my grandparents said ha- that they have never experienced in their entire life. Um, so it's just everyone needs to stay strong. You know, uh, keep yourself occupied. Um, if you need people to talk to, definitely uh, reach out. Um, you know, if if I, I have my Discord, Cross on my Discord. Yeah, I about to say like I'll, I'll post the Discord link uh, on uh, the comment section, so that way if someone really wants to like join in and 
know, just talk to people while they're, you know, um, chilling in the house. They can definitely do that with us. We talk pretty much daily. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have anything else to add to that. All right. Well, uh, really appreciate everyone for listening, uh, especially if you came all the way to this point. Um, hopefully you got a lot of good information about, uh, you know, what our plans are for upcoming videos. Uh, so that way you can, you know, stay tuned for those. Um, and also definitely want to thank new type for sponsoring this video. Uh, check out their shop. They're still uh, out and about, they're still shipping stuff. So, uh, try and get things, especially while they're in stock. Cause what I've noticed is a lot of stores and a lot of places to include Hobby Link Japan, USA Gundam store and all that. Um, a lot of their stock has been going out on rapid, uh, rates just because, People are just buying yeah, kits. The, uh, the, yeah, that and also the distribution chain is a little bit messed up because of all this. Because a lot of less, there's it's a lot harder for the stores to get shipments of stuff sometimes too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Because yeah, I remember cool. when we're in a uh, situation like we're in right now, um, some of the biggest risks can be um, like trucks and convoys moving from place to place between states and between different regions. Yeah, and, and order anything from Japan is almost like non-existent at that at this point if you're outside of uh japan or even just asia in general oh yeah you literally cannot use sao mail Mm -hmm. yeah so and even ems is heavily delayed yeah i i mean hopefully this thing ends soon um just that way people can get back to their normal lives but um you know take all precautions necessary and uh keep you guys safe but that's it from us. Uh, thank you all for listening. And, uh, you know, just keep on building. And we'll be seeing you or talking to you in the next episode. Take care, guys.